friends, welcome to Once Upon a Pipe. I am down home. This is the house I grew up in, and it's still kind of a playground, if you will, uh, for my kids. Um, I've got Dexter helping me, and, and if Dexter steps too far away, you won't be able to hear me. A little housekeeping before I get to the business of the day. So this evening, I've got C&D's Bluegrass. Uh, as they describe it, it is a steady rhythm of bright and red Virginias joined by an accompaniment of robust Perique and dark fired Kentucky making for a spicy little ditty sure to keep you on your toes. Well, if you're smoking any C&D blend like Bluegrass, Haunted Bookshop, Tuskegee Airmen, you'll, you'll be on your toes for sure. Um, not my uh, best smoking pipe, but I've had this pipe for, for few decades and um, I got this when I was a young soldier and uh, stationed at Fort Carson Colorado and uh, I will definitely tell you, you you will feel the perique and a little bit of that spice of that dark fired Kentucky in here for sure um, I do not like the tin note however that being said, it does flow pretty good. It, it burns pretty good. Uh, it's a nice, even burn. Um, you'll get a little bit more of a kick as you get further down into the bowl. Um, it's not going to be on the, my list of favorites, but it'll do. Well, I, I don't know if... Uh, the background noise of the busy highway of US 27 is going to cover up my voice, but I, I want to take you up on the hill and really I, I want to talk to you about something that I'm watching happen every day right here in my small little neck of the woods. Uh, it's called changing landscapes. So I've got Wesley Buddy in the truck right there. Uh, he's coming along with us for the ride and so Dexter, let's uh, let's take a little ride up on the hill. My dad retired in 1980 from Fort Eustis, Virginia, and this he lived on this farm before he went into the service in 1960. Uh, so in 1980 when he returned back home to this spot, uh, this is where I grew up for the remainder of my childhood. I was 10 years old when we moved back. And that busy highway, right out that way, right out the window, that's US 27, it was only two lanes. No car dealerships, there was a drive-in theater back there. And, uh, and a lot has changed since 1980. Just want to take you back, go that way, uh, where the motorcycle course was. And uh, just want to show you some of the things that were, I guess at the time, unappreciated by me because I was young, I was 10 years old. Um, I was not at all used to living out in the country and I never realized what a gold mine that we had here um, until I went into the service myself and then moved back to Kentucky. So where we're driving now is where I used to ride my little motorcycle. Had a little Honda XL70, 
I had a Honda CT70, then an XL70. I'll hold the phone out the uh, window here so you can see. There we are. So all of this, at one time we had cows and we had some pigs. We were raising some corn and uh, beans as well. And so this whole area was, was like a nice little pasture land. And I would ride my motorcycle back here and it was like my little escape from, uh, from everything. I actually, I escaped a few whippings by getting on my bike and riding up here. Um, hey, this is good. Let me just turn right here. <sighs> Across the fence, right over there well, i don't know if you can see it but there's there's a building over there um that is our local sam's club one of them but when i was here there was another man mr lester and he had cows on the other side of that fence and sometimes our cows would get over there and sometimes his cows would get over here and uh and we'd have to sort them out but now that is blacktop. It's a parking lot for Sam's Club, for Kohl's, for Starbucks, Jimmy John's, and all the other little mess that they're developing up there. Changing landscapes. What used to be a very peaceful little neck of the woods is now busy with the sounds of cars coming and going, more traffic signals. And uh, each time we lose a little bit of that peace. I wanna take you to another spot. Wesley, let's uh, go across the street to the drag strip where I work. All right, while we're on our way to a shop, I might as well get Dexter to tell you a little bit about what he thinks of this bluegrass. All right, Dexter, you're up. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. Um, and you don't have to say that just because I'm I'm smoking it. Go ahead. <laughs> Honest opinion, Dexter. I hate it. I'm just kidding. That's it's it's good. I uh, I I do like it actually. Um, it is a little strong, but sometimes you need that little bit of strongness, you know. All right. When you say strong, strong in what way? Like the room note, or like it's just powerful, like it hits you, wants to knock you down, because it's it's not an aromatic. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I wouldn't say it wants to knock me down, but it definitely, it definitely sort of, uh, I, I notice it, and I could probably notice it from a little bit of ways, uh, way too. Mm-hmm. Like a uh, double espresso just kind of wakes you up. There you go. C and D bluegrass, like a double espresso, it kind of wakes you up. Okay. Mm. Uh oh. Drop the lighter, bro. We are at our next location. Uh, I work in that building right there, and uh, there we go. Hmm. Right over here, up until about a month and a half ago, this was farmland. Uh, right here where this dirt is would be cattle grazing up and down. And um, maybe it's been two months ago. Right over there on the other side of this, this tiny little row of trees where that light brown grass is was a pond and I would watch the geese land on that pond um, it was really nice actually uh, I kind of kind of enjoyed watching them it's part of the landscape here and I enjoyed watching the cows you know I mean it, it was just part of my 
daily routine. I come into work. I could hear the cows out here uh, as they would go up and down. And um, I liked when, when the farmer would come out and have his bush hog and would just be mowing um, the smell of that fresh cut grass. Good memories. I actually do not know what is gonna be in this spot, right? But do you see all that grass over there? You see this whole field and, and Dexter, uh, see if you can film, stand on this side and see if you can film as far up that way. Can you get how far that goes without hurting yourself? So one thing I can, I can tell you is that all of that green back there, most of that, if not all of it, is going to be black top and buildings. This landscape is, is changing. And, and I realize that uh, many will call this something known as progress. It's called growth. But what really makes me think when you start turning all of these fields into blacktop and apartments and more buildings, we lose something. We lose something. And I think that something is <laughs> part of our souls, if you will. Um, not necessarily in a spiritual sense, but just in a sense of being connected with, with the earth. Um, I think about God setting Adam in the garden and uh, Adam's role was to tend the garden, make it grow. And, and, uh, I'm just amazed, you know, the, the earth is like a garden. He's put us here and, and, uh, we haven't taken the best care of it, you know? Um, but after being here for over 40 some odd years, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging, if you will, to see this landscape change. It's making way for something, but I can tell you from watching other places that have developed over a period of time that uh, you now start to see buildings that are empty and run down and uh, it's just nothing but, you know, concrete, uh, good for nothing, actually. I'm gonna take you to our final to our final spot but um, this is close to me because this is what I used to I used to see this every single day uh, coming to work and I will no longer have that view soon soon when they get done with doing all this I'm gonna come over here as I drive up and I'm gonna look across this fence and there might even be a road they might take this fence out they might actually take this fence out move these trees and connect this road to right here. And then I'm going to look out and I'm going to be seeing traffic come up and down the street going wherever. So kind of sad about that. All right, Dexter, let's uh, get west and we're going to go to our last destination. I think you can see our destination, Wesley. Do you see it? Uh, yeah. All right, let's just go up in this little driveway right here. Okay. Easy. 
easy, easy, easy. Mm-mm-mm. I want to give you guys just a minute to take in some of this where I am and uh, just take a look at this beautiful pond here. Okay, so at one point, not very long ago, right? I would travel down Ash Grove Road and I loved looking at the landscape here. This was all luscious green grass, very, very well kept, mowed, right? Uh, you could watch geese and ducks on the pond, right? just a beautiful spot that white house up there that house was showcased by the incredible landscape that surrounded it today this landscape has changed Let's look at all this dirt. And I don't even know how far back that goes, right? Uh, Brandon Crossing is right over the hill there. And you see this huge mound of dirt. That huge mound of dirt was part of this absolutely gorgeous landscape. This will become more asphalt. Uh, some rumors I've heard say this is going to be apartments. They're going to keep the house maybe like as a clubhouse. Um, they may keep the pond, put a fountain out there. I don't know. But one thing I do know, when we come down this country road, uh, you're not going to see any more green grass on this side. And Dexter, if you can follow me across the street here to that view. When a couple of years ago, that's a few years ago now, where all of those apartments are, that was a field. It was beautiful green and pasture land. And, uh, we now look at it, apartments, 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 and then a development of housing. Man, I I even remember when that was uh, being built. Yeah. Remember the sign saying whatever it's called, coming soon. Coming soon. This used to be what I called a country road. You know, like I get on my motorcycle and love to come back here because there was, wasn't a lot of traffic. And this is the same road that uh, when I was 10 years old that I rode the bus on as it uh, dropped students off. Um, I think we lose a little bit, folks. And, and I know sometimes it's hard to judge whether this is good or bad, but... Um, I just don't think that we can continue to wipe away all of this green space, put more asphalt in, and everything be for the better, right? I don't know if people are gonna have anywhere else to go. I mean, it, it's gonna be so that you're gonna have to travel a pretty good little distance just to be able to get away. Even some of the back roads that I take on my motorcycle that used to be good getaway spots. You know, I just ride my bike through the country. I could pull off the side of the road. I can look at the horses galloping in the fields and uh, the smell of the fresh air, the country air. 
from the bluegrass hitting me. Uh, just a nice, peaceful stop. Now, I'm gonna have to travel further and further away to get that feeling. And even some of those places way out in the country that I thought, man, there would never be anything out here. All of a sudden, these little subdivisions and subdivisions with million dollar homes are popping up. This is the, the changing landscape. Uh, I fear not just of, of my tiny little neck of the woods, but of America. And uh, love it or hate it, we, we will have to, we'll have to deal with it. Um, I'm not saying I'm one to stand in the way of change. I just think that it does us good to pause for a moment and just think about what we're losing as we take this beautiful countryside and turn it into asphalt, cement, and buildings. I mean, you got to think of uh, what Kentucky was known for for so long. Yeah. It was known for their beautiful, uh, their, their land. Our rolling know? hills. Mm-hmm. You know? Where are all the horses? Certainly not here. You could you used to be able to drive down on Ash Grove and on some of the other roads um, uh, out here in seahorses and stables and, and stuff. But the, the other problem that I see when I think about land like this that has been here for generations, basically, that house has been here for decades, um, people like my dad, farmers that have owned land that many of them have passed away and maybe they've left it to their children. Um, in my dad's case, he's, he's older. He'll be 88 in February. He looks amazing and is amazing. Uh, still gets around and just is, is quite phenomenal. But uh, there's nobody to take care of the land anymore. The younger generation has no interest very few anyways, in actually keeping the land and doing something with it other than developing it. Because quite frankly, uh, whoever had this land, uh, it, they sold it and cashed it in. It's a lot of money. And, you know, if you have, if you left this land to your children, uh, why not? You know, if you're in your 40s, 50s, maybe, like myself, um, I can see a lot of people in that situation saying, hey, I can cash in on millions. It'll be more than what I can ever save for, and I could have that today. And, uh, and then they go move someplace. Uh, you know, maybe they moved out in the country someplace, or maybe they you know, just have a nicer home over there. Um, but either way, it just shows, it's, 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 it's the changing landscape of our geography and of our culture. I know that I took a flight yesterday with a good buddy of mine, Jeff, that has a 1957 Cessna 172 straight tail and we flew to a couple of grass strips and uh, there was so much beauty in Kentucky but as we were flying we could see more and more places more and more dirt being turned over and heavy machinery um, building more more distilleries more schools more asphalt. Well, I'll let you think about that for a little while. As always, I appreciate you tuning in to Once Upon a Pipe. I'd like to thank Dexter and Wesley for coming along with me. And uh, not only did I want to bring them along as I make the video to, to help me film it, but I, I want them to see, to be aware of what's going on here as well. Until next time, my friends, May God bless you, and as uh, 
as always, thank you for visiting Once Upon a Pipe.